Good morning everyone. Welcome to another video lecture after a long while. I hope you guys had a good break. Everybody who didn't attend the online lecture, well, you should have attended because we went through your question papers of the PT1, we went through the responses, we went through how I marked you and I showed you some examples of what you guys did wrong and what you guys did right. So if you didn't attend that lecture, uh, you can get in touch with me. I'll provide you with all the information and everything else. If you're watching this and you still haven't given your English exam, please get in touch with me because there will be retests happening this week and I have to take retests of everybody who is absent. So if you were absent, if you didn't get your English marks, get in touch with me today or tomorrow, basically before this week ends, uh, get in touch with me regarding your PT1 marks. Otherwise, you won't be getting them. Otherwise, you will be marked absent for English. Uh, ignore my appearance, you can make fun of it, but this is like what I look like right now. I'm not going to apologize for it. Uh, so you have to bear and deal with it till this video gets over. You can make fun of me if you want, that's all right. Just don't turn off the video and like watch, finish watching the video properly. Uh, this lesson is actually important. This is like the first poem we are doing in class 12, so this is kind of significant. Uh, anyways, so this is just the introduction. So the, My Mother at 66 was written by Kamla Das and Kamla Das is one of the most prolific Indian poetesses of our time. She's been referred to as the mother of modern English poetry. Uh, I haven't read a lot of her work but one that I do remember is A Hot Noon in Malabar which was I read it a very long time ago. Now if you don't know if you're geography students and everything else and if you don't know what Malabar is, Malabar is a coast in India which is the opposite of the Konkan coast. So look those things up, Malabar Coast, Konkan Coast and everything. I'll provide some more information in the video, although not as much because this is a very simple poem, people. Like this is really not that difficult, this poem. I go, went through it right now while I was like preparing for this video and everything else. And it's pretty simple. There's like not a lot of difficult things about it. Uh, except for the theme, the theme might be difficult. And there's like one or two images that she has used here and there uh, that, that is kind of complicated. I wouldn't even say complicated, it's just different than what you're used to. So that's just it. So let's just end this introduction here and we get into the chapter. This is not going to be a very long video because the poem is just like basically three stanzas. That's it. So three stanzas doesn't really make sense for me to make an hour long video about. So I'll try to uh, keep this explanation short and sweet and as in depth as possible. Uh, all the other discussions and everything else like I've told you guys before. Keep making notes, keep making your rough notebooks and everything else, you know, maintain your notes properly. But anyways, so without further ado, let's just get into the video. And if you have any questions and everything else, you can just make your notes and get in touch with me later. So, My Mother at 66 by Kamla Das. Now, I'll read through the poem for you guys. I'll give you a reading, a proper read through of it. And then I'll explain it to you like line by line, stanza by stanza. Driving from my parents' home to Cochin last Friday morning, I saw my mother beside me. Doors open mouth, her face ashen like that of a corpse. And realized with pain that she was as old as she looked. But soon put that thought away and looked out at young trees sprinting, the merry children spilling out of their homes. But after the airport security check, standing a few yards away, I looked again at her, wan, pale, as a late winter's moon, and felt that old familiar ache, my childhood's fear. But all I said was, see you soon, Amma. All I did was smile and smile and smile. So, pause the video here. Take a little bit of time to read it on your own and once you've read it now we can move on all right so my mother at 66 now this is a poem which is known in the literary terms as a confessional a uh, confessional is when an author is telling us about their innermost feelings about their innermost thoughts in the form of a poem or a short story or a dialogue or a conversation or whatever the case might be in that moment but a confessional is something which is considered very honest. It's considered brutally honest in some cases. So confessionals is an author exposing their innermost thoughts, their innermost workings, their deepest fears, the darkest desires and anything else through the form of a poem, through the form of literature. And that's why we call it a confessional. So just remember that, like if somebody asks you what style is this poem, what style is my mother at 66 written in, it's a confessional. All right, so let's take a look at the first line. 
uh, I would just like since like uh, this poem's format is not divided properly into stanzas and paragraphs and everything else, so I'll try to break it down properly for you. So just keep in mind like where the punctuations are. So for example, driving from my parents' home to Cochin last Friday morning, comma, I saw my mother, comma, beside me, comma. All right. And then the next comma is after the word doze, open mouth. Her face ashen like that of a corpse and realized with pain. Now, do you see the? Uh, now, take a look at this. All right. Wait. I thought my video glitched out for a second. That's why I stopped. Anyways, uh, so uh, doze has a comma behind it. Uh, beside me has a comma behind it. I saw my mother has a comma behind it. All right. Now, what the poem is doing, like what the poet is doing here with these commas, is breaking the poem down into pieces, into different sections within the same stanza. So, for example, like one uh, section of this poem is, uh, which the information which is being provided to us is, driving from my parents' home to Cochin last Friday morning, I saw my mother beside me. Now, first part of the information is driving from my parents' home to Cochin last Friday morning. That's the first part. That's why there's a comma after it. Then the second part of the stanza is, I saw my mother beside me. Then another comma, then doze, comma, open mouth, comma, and then her face ashen like that, and so on. All right. So what this does is using commas so frequently in a poem breaks down the stanzas into different sections, into different pieces of information which are all independent of each other, which all work separately from each other. But the comma makes sure that uh, it's part of the entire piece. Right? There's no full stop here. That means the sentence isn't ending. That means the idea isn't ending. It's just going. So that's the reason why commas are used so frequently in poems mostly. Uh, and there is no periods or there is no full stops here. So let's just uh, look at this. The first line is pretty self-explanatory. Driving from my parents' home to Cochin last Friday morning, I saw my mother beside me. So she's driving home. Where? Now listen to this. Attention. Pay attention to this, all right? Because you guys messed this up in the objective type question and answers as well. Like there was this question like, where did Aram live? And a lot of you messed it up. Some of you thought that like uh, I had given you the wrong answer or maybe that might not be you. That might be class 11. Sorry about that. That might be class 11. Class 11 messed up a lot of objective type question and answers. Uh, even you guys did. You guys had like a couple of mistakes and everything else, and uh, which is the reason why I'm telling you guys to pay attention to this. So where was she driving from? She was driving from her parents home to Cochin. When was she driving? She was driving last Friday morning. All right. So just pay attention to that. So she saw her mother beside her doze. Doze means she's sleeping but not completely, like, right? Doze means light nap or a light sleep where, like, you know, when you're sitting and you're bored and you're not doing anything and you suddenly, like, fall asleep and somebody wakes up, hey, hey, wake up, and then you just, like, startled up awake. That's called being woken up out of a doze or a daze, whatever it is, all right? Now, she's dozing open mouth. What does that mean? Open mouth means because when she, whenever you're sleeping in a car or whenever you're sleeping standing up, what happens is you fall back asleep and your mouth opens like this. So that's what dozing means, basically. Uh, that's what it means. Like, that's what her mother was sleeping like. Her mother was open mouth, reclining back on a seat, and her mouth was open, and she was dozing away. Okay, so it's referred to as a simile since it's like, okay? You can uh, double check it. If I'm wrong, you can let me know. Just remember that. Whenever I'm telling you and you're making notes, you can just go and double check it, whatever I'm telling you. You can verify whatever information I'm giving you. If I'm wrong, you can inform me. This way, we both learn. All right. It's not like I'm perfect. I'm infallible. I'm just a human being as well. There's literally no way in hell that I'll know everything on this planet. So if you find something that you don't agree with and then you look it up, that you research it and then it says that I'm wrong, let me know so I can learn along with you guys. All right. I don't know if this video is just glitchy or as my camera just showing it, the recordings glitchy. But if this video is glitchy, let me know. I'll have to record another one for you guys. All right. So, so the line was her face ashen like that of a corpse. Uh, so the reason why she says ashen like that of a corpse is what happens is when you die, all the blood flow and everything else stops in your body, right? So what happens is all your skin loses its color, like it just fades, your skin looks like ash. There's another way of looking at it, like her face looks ashen like that of a corpse. Uh, in like Hindu tradition, you burn your bodies and you turn them into ash right and what's the color of the ash that's what her face remembers uh, resembles right so that that's another way of looking at it the simplest way of explaining it is her face has no color and she looks like that of a cause because as you get older your circulation slows down your skin 
uh, fades that it's not as bright as anything else like my skin is less bright than you because i'm older than you and my skin has more exposure to the sun and everything else and like the older you get the worse your skin gets that's basically it so this is her example this is what she's saying like her mother's face looks like that of a corpse to her and realized with pain that she was as old as she looked but soon put that thought away and then she realized with uh, like what she said like she realized with the look that her mother was as old as she looked now that's the strange thing that's like something i relate to as well as because i'm getting older like i'm going to be in my 30s soon but my parents are still the same to me like they might look older now they might not be the same age anymore but when i look at my mother when i look at my father even right now they still look the same to me like i can see them getting old but like it's still the same people that uh, raised me that's the still be same people who gave birth to me and who have been there through my entire childhood now i'm getting older as well and they're getting even more old and at some point you have to accept the fact that yeah there is a slight chance that you might outlive your parents and there is a large possibility that you will outlive your parents unless until something bad happens which i hope it doesn't uh, but your parents will usually pass away before you and which is like an inevitable fact of life everybody passes away it's nothing new so that's what the realization the poet is coming to here like she's realizing that oh my goodness my mother is 66 and she actually looks 66 for a moment that like you know in her moment of unguardedness like her mother was dozing sleeping like when we are sleeping we have all our guards down like you're not dressed up you're not made up you are basically bare to the world to see right so that's what happened to her mother as well like the poet looked at her and she was like oh my goodness my mother is so old for the first time she's realizing like how old her mother actually is and then she leaves that thought behind because it's a very painful thought like i said uh, knowing that yeah yeah you are inevitably going to outlive your parents and your parents are going to pass away in front of you that's a painful thought so then she says but put that thought away soon and looked out at young trees sprinting the merry children spilling out of their homes now trees don't sprint right trees just stay uh, in the same place uh but what happens is whenever you're driving past down a highway and there are trees on the side of the road like if some some of you have been on trains if some of you have been on like long road journeys you'll know that like straight road journeys and by the way i mean like not like in the hills where you're turning like i'm talking about highways going straight down the plains so if you're going straight down a plane and there's trees on both sides if you're looking at the trees on the one side it'll look like the trees are moving away from you it's the same effect that happens in a train like when you're going so fast in one direction that the trees look like they're moving away so that's the same example she's trying to give here that's why she's used this imagery of young trees sprinting as because when they're driving it looks like the trees are sprinting away and merry children spilling out of their homes children coming out of their houses <clears throat> now why has she used the metaphor here i wouldn't say metaphor uh give me another word for it if you have another word for it let me know in the comments uh but the way she uses this image here tree sprinting the merry children spilling out of their homes excuse me is because she's contrasting it with the previous line where she compared her mother to a corpse now a corpse is lifeless a tree is full of life children are full of life ash is lifeless right now this is the contrast she's using ash in the first line and she's using what trees right so what burns and turns into ashes trees usually mostly everything turns into ashes and what is used to burn a corpse trees are used to burn a corpse so these are all little things that are interconnected so if you read a poem like usually this is what happens when and that's the reason why poetry is so beautiful that's the reason why we study poetry is because an author is using every tool at his disposal to create an image that he wants to share with the readers now she is using an image here like she's using her mother's face as a corpse like she's saying my mother looks like a corpse but in the next line she's comparing it to a young tree sprinting or young children spilling out of the home what she's doing here is she's contrasting like the oldness or the old age of her mother with that with youth of the trees or youth of the children what she's showing is the dichotomy of life uh, i've used this word before dichotomy in other explanations if you don't know this look up its meaning right now and it's spelled d i c h o t o m y dichotomy look up its meaning in the dictionary and find it out but basically it's showing the dichotomy of life where one side you have young trees growing you have young children growing up into their lives fulfilling their lives you know having new experiences coming into this world and on the other hand you have old people who are passing away who are coming at the end of their lives who have lived a full life and now are just waiting for them to pa- themselves to pass away so this is the contrast that she's trying to draw in, uh, when she's using like the words corpse and when she's using the word trees and children all right 
But after the airport security check, standing a few yards away, I looked at, again at her wan, pale, as a late winter's moon and felt that old familiar ache, my childhood's fear. But all I said was, see you soon, Amma. All I did was smile and smile and smile. Now, wan and pale, these are two words. Now, wan is a word that you can understand by this simple way. So, if a moon is growing, what do we, what do we say when the moon is waxing? Which is like, if you're a geography student or if, even if you have like a little bit of general knowledge, you'll know this. So, the moon, once it's moving towards being full, we call it like the waxing moon. And once it moves towards like disappearing or the new moon, we call it the waning moon. Right? So, that's what she's saying here. Like, her mother looks at her like wan, pale as a late winter's moon. Now, this is something you have to find out on your own. What does a late winter's moon look like? Why is the author comparing her mother to a late winter's moon? Look it up. Uh, look up the expression like Google it, find it out. What does it mean? What does a late winter's moon mean? And then we can have a discussion during the online lecture. And felt that old familiar ache, my childhood's fear. Old familiar ache, the one which she just had before in the car when she looked at her cops. And it's like a childhood's fear. Yeah, this is what I would say. When we are children, we are afraid of losing our parents. As we go uh, and become teenagers, we are rebelling against our parents, we're trying to fight against them. Once we become young adults or once we go off into college, then we're trying to find our own identities. Then we're trying to settle our own lives and our parents don't really matter that much. Once we get married, that's when we started realizing that, oh, our parents are actually getting old. And then once we hit middle age, and that's when we realize, yeah, our parents are very old and they need us right now. All right? So the familiar ache she's referring to is the fear that a young child has of losing his or her mother, right? Uh, please ignore my pronouns. I might say his, his, his sometimes, like or her sometimes. I might, uh, I might be ignoring a couple of genders. Don't hashtag me. Uh, don't think that I'm not woke or anything. It's just that, like you know, talking in a flow. You sometimes like just refer to something as his, especially like the poet. I'll say his uh, instead of saying her sometimes. So just ignore that, that's just like a stupid mistake anyways, just let's just focus on the poem for now. So childhood fear is the same thing, everybody, every single one of us was scared of something when we were little and for the poet, the fear was losing her mother, which is now coming a, becoming a reality with time because her mother is getting older, she's getting older. But you don't say those things to your parents, right? You don't walk up to your mother and say, hey, gonna die soon, eh? You don't say that or you don't walk up to your father and it's like, well, your time is almost up. You don't say that stuff. And if you do say that to your parents, go give them a hug, you monster, if you say that to your parents. But what she says is, uh, see you soon, Amma, which means like, I'll see you soon again. And all I did was smile and smile and smile. And uh, as she was saying goodbye, instead of this, uh, instead of, you know, hugging her mother or crying or telling her that like, this is what's going to happen. She just walks away with a smile on her face, with all this turmoil going inside of her, with all this thoughts inside of her. Why is that? Another example of typical Indian relationships with our parents. We don't really have conversations with our parents about difficult stuff. Our parents don't have conversations with us about difficult stuff. The lucky ones of us who are watching this video, there are some lucky few of us who have decent relationships with our parents, who can have good conversations with our parents, who can have discussions with them. Well, you are blessed if you have those parents. Be grateful, be thankful because uh, that's a blessing, especially in this country. Yeah, but for a lot of us, we have to hide our emotions. A lot of us have to bottle up our emotions. We don't get to share all of them with our friends. We don't get to share all of them with our family. Uh, uh, especially our parents and that's the reason why the uh, poet here is just smiling and hiding her feelings from her mother not actually telling her what she's fearing what her fear is and this last line all I did was smile and smile and smile as an alliteration alliteration is a poetic device used to emphasize something or show the importance of something so here she's referring repeating smile so many different times is because you know, whenever you're saying goodbye to somebody, you have to say, okay, bye, and bye, see you later, yeah, see you, see you, see you. So these are the smiles that she's talking about, this constant smiling, instead of like telling her, my mother, you're going to die, and I'm going to miss you, you're 66, you almost look like a corpse, you look like a walking zombie, you don't say that to your mother when you're saying bye to her, but uh, you can just smile and wave and hug her and walk away, which is what the poet does here. So that's the end of the explanation for the chapter. Now, there are question and answers here, five question and answers. I'm not going to give them to you at the end of this video. 
what we'll do is we'll have our online class and then I'll provide you guys with PDFs to the question and answers, a summary in English and a summary in Hindi because most people have asked me for it. Anyways, so this is like the explanation of my mother at 66. If you feel like I've missed something out, if you feel like there's something in your notes that you've made that I'm not referring to or that I'm not paying attention to, bring it up to my attention and we can figure it out. So thank you all for watching and I'll see you guys online soon.